Hi, my name is Dan Snow, and just before you watch this documentary on real stories, I want to tell you about our new history channel. It's called History Hit TV, and it is the world's best history channel. It's like Netflix, but just for history. So if you're a history fan, whether it's documentaries about the Romans, medieval period, Chinese history, modern history, Second World War, we've got it all. Head over to historyhit.tv or follow the link in the description below this video and use the code REALSTORIES for your unbelievable introductory offer. In the meantime, enjoy this video. July 1974, and Cyprus descends into a bloody conflict. A decade and more of clashes between the Turkish Cypriots and the Greek Cypriots on the island had culminated in an all-out war. Within weeks, a ceasefire was agreed, and a buffer zone was established to keep the warring factions apart. It remains in place to this day, the dead zone, cutting the small island in two. Time is running out to reunite a land where Greek and Turkish Cypriots once lived together in harmony. The guns may have been silent for decades, but the divisions have cut deep wounds not only across the island, but in the hearts of her people. Throughout its history, Cyprus has been a melting pot of cultures. At the crossroads of East and West, many of the world's greatest civilizations have set foot on this island. Wave after wave of foreign conquerors and rulers, the Venetians, the Ottomans and the Greeks have all left their stamp on the island. Today, it attracts a different type of visitor. But scratch the surface, and the wounds of Cyprus's recent past are all too plain to see. Don't believe this blue sky and the sun and the sea. No, there's a lot of blood, there's a lot of pain. And for what? We have to put everything together, look at our past, look at the mirror. It's an ugly face. It's a shitty face. Huh? It's full of blood. Half a century ago, thousands were killed in two violent conflicts. And many more innocent people disappeared never to be seen again. Decades later, families are still searching for their loved ones. What I can see is that Every wound of war heals, except this one. And it creates, you know, huge, huge, uh, deep, deep suffering and huge uh, uh, pain. The body is the only proof of death and the only way to allow closure for the families. In 1960, Cyprus gained independence after 80 years of British rule. Turkish and Greek Cypriots who lived and worked side by side on the island were now the co-founders of this new republic. But it wouldn't take long before the power-sharing government would break down. The Cypriots were happy because we got independence, we got rid of the conquerors. How many conquerors for how many centuries? Finally, we were on our own. But by that time, the seeds of division, of communalism and of segregation had already been sown by the British. So by 1963, the two communities were at each other's throat and we had troubles. Mounting calls from right-wing Greek Cypriots for union with Greece had made the Turkish Cypriot minority fearful for their safety. Tension soon escalated and there was bloodshed on the streets of the capital, Nicosia. In all, over 500 people were killed the vast majority were Turkish Cypriots. In summer 1964, a truce was agreed and a line drawn through the city, separating the two communities. 
This was the so-called Green Line. There were long stretches of peace, and then suddenly something would flare up for a few days, and then again peace. It was after 74 that the disaster fell upon us. In June 1974, factions calling for union with Greece orchestrated a disastrous coup to overthrow the Cypriot government. Five days later, Turkey sent in her troops under the pretext of protecting the Turkish Cypriot minority. What resulted was a short but bloody war. After just over a month, the Turkish military had taken control of a third of the island. To end the fighting, a no-man's land was created, and the Green Line was extended from Nicosia east and west for 180 kilometers across the full width of the island. To the north, the Turkish Cypriot community, and to the south, the Greek Cypriots. It remains in place today, patrolled by the United Nations. As UN soldiers, we are here by, with, and through the consent of both parties, in the North and the South. Uh, we work with them on a daily basis to maintain peace and stability within the buffer zone. As you'll notice, we're not armed, and it shows that we trust both sides in the conflict to respect our position here as peacekeepers within the buffer zone. Nicosia is the last remaining divided capital in the world. And though there have been few violent incidents in the last few years, it's still a place of bristling tension. This street is right in the center of the old town of Nicosia within the Venetian walls. It's notoriously three and a half meters apart, which is the closest that the two sets of forces came to each other during the conflict. It's important to remember that many soldiers from both sides died in and around this area. So this is a sensitive part of the buffer zone. It contains buildings which are old family homes caught up in the fighting and now abandoned and derelicts. Tragically, many thousands of innocent civilians across the whole island, men, women and children from both sides, also suffered horrific atrocities during the wars. In 1981, in a historic move, the leaders of both communities, along with the United Nations, came together to try and resolve one of the most painful aspects of the conflicts. To recover, identify and return to the families the remains of 2,002 people who had simply disappeared. They became known as the missing. What is a missing person in conflict? Most of the time, it's a person you see on these tables who received a bullet in the back of his head. Execution, enforced disappearance. That's what we're talking about. They didn't fall from their bikes. Here in the lab, deep within the buffer zone, the sensitive task of piecing together the remains begins. The Committee of Missing Persons, or CMP, has three members. Two appointed by the Greek and Turkish Cypriot communities, and a third by the UN. They manage more than 60 archaeologists, anthropologists and geneticists and conduct excavations across the island. Their aim is to establish who these people were. It's an extremely important humanitarian task. I've worked uh, in five armed conflicts for the International Red Cross. I've seen a lot of suffering in my 23 years. It's the only suffering of war that gets worse with time. It affects individuals extremely deeply. It is a phenomenon well known by psychologists where the missing person is more important in the life of the families than the people that are living around. It affects individuals in their daily lives. They cannot cope, they cannot carry on with their lives. They are stuck in the past. If somebody goes missing, then it creates such a big vacuum and such a big paralysis in the lives of that family that they can't move because you need proof of death. Otherwise, people keep on believing that they're alive somehow. Even if their logic says that they must be dead, their heart 
refuses to believe. Ee, bizim evde dolapta durdu. Yani e, belki 10, belki 15 sene babamın elbiseleri hep o dolaptaydı. Teki biz e, büyüdük de annemi yavaş yavaş ikna ettik. O elbiseleri e, çıkarıp e, yok etti. Evet e, annem hiçbir zaman babamın ölmüş olabileceğine e, inanmadı. Bugün de inanmamaktadır. course responsibility is very very high especially for the missing persons families you have to be very open transparent and straightforward transparency very important so it is one of the project that you can see both turkish cypriots and greek cypriots are working together and addressing the black history of cyprus Αφού έχουν εκταθεί τα οστά, όλα είτε έχουν βρεθεί στο νότιο είτε το βόρειο μέρος του νησιού, έρχονται εδώ στο εργαστήριο με τις εκθέσεις των αρχαιολόγων. Υπάρχουν διαφόρων ειδών ταφές. Υπάρχουν επίσης οι περιπτώσεις όπου υπάρχει καύση στα οστά. Αυτές είναι και από τις πιο δύσκολες περιπτώσεις, γιατί η θερμότητα καταστρέφει παντελώς το DNA. At the moment, I'm working on a commingled mass grave, and we do have uh, several individuals, but unfortunately, as you can see, the remains are mixed, and it's really hard process to separate the individuals. The CMP's priority is to locate, identify, and return the remains to the families, and not to establish the cause of death or to find the perpetrators. This was a choice made to put the, the priority on the recovery, on the humanitarian aspect, and not on the judicial aspect. Because it's a small country where everybody knows everyone, and witnesses would not have come uh, with information on burial sites if they had been subject to prosecution. Sevgol Uladag's work as an investigative journalist would open up old wounds and break the silence surrounding the missing. So what I did was, I said, I'm going to do something crazy. I establish a hotline for missing. Call me if you know something. I don't want to know your name. Don't tell me your name. I promise you will be anonymous. So I start getting hundreds and hundreds and thousands of calls, and I still get calls. And all this information was the essence of where the missing were buried. I got a lot of death threats from both sides. They were protecting their own side's killers, and they were not acknowledging that something ever happened. People started remembering and speaking. All the information that was repressed started coming out. Whatever information I get, I share with the CMP voluntarily, and I try to help them to ease their work. In the years before 1974, few people could have foretold the death and destruction that was on the horizon. Cyprus was still a tourist hotspot, and Varosha and Famagusta was its most glamorous resort. Its bright blue waters and beautiful sandy beaches drew Hollywood celebrities like Elizabeth Taylor, Richard Burton and Paul Newman. But the war changed everything. With the invasion of the Turkish troops, towns and villages across the north came under attack. In Varosha, its 39,000 residents fled for their lives. Today, the former millionaire's playground is an empty ghost town guarded by Turkish soldiers. By the time a ceasefire was agreed, only a matter of weeks later, the invading forces had occupied the north. The country was split. A buffer zone was created to separate the warring factions. A division that would cut deep into the hearts of both separate communities.
as a child, I used to be taken to Ermu Street by my father because that was the place where Greeks and Turks together used to work side by side on a daily basis. That's where you found everything. It was the bazaar, it was the merchants, it was full of life. After that, it was a ruined street, houses and shops left and right destroyed, collapsed, collapsing still. Nobody walks there, apart from the UN that patrols every now and then. Maybe a stray dog, a stray cat or a snake will cross, but that's as far as it goes. That's the old heart of the city, not beating anymore. Εδώ ζούσε μια κοινωνία αρμονικά, αγαπημένα, μοιράζονταν τις χαρές, τις λύπες. Δεν είχαν τίποτε άλλο να μοιράσουν. Ζούμε σε έναν παράδεισο και φαίνεται ότι δεν το εκτιμήσαμε αρκετά. Two communities that had once lived side by side for generations were now being pushed further apart. Nearly half the population had lost their homes as an exodus of refugees began across the whole of the island. The Turkish Cypriot refugees would head to the north and the Greek Cypriots to the south, making the separation complete. <laughs> Bir ayrımcılık söz konusu orada. E, i̇ster istemez e, Türkler ve Rumlar olarak düşünüyorsunuz durumu. E, bir çocuk kafası olarak da işte Rumlar bize saldırdı dendiği zaman onlar bizim düşmanımız olarak kabul ediyorsun. Şey bir atmosfer. Hmm, böyle sanki yukarıdan karanlık bir şey inmiş gibiydi evin içinde. Kötü bir atmosferdi. Σίγουρα δεν ήταν και το καλύτερο συνέστημα να πολεμάς με τους συμπατριώτες σου. Κοινό που έζησα στο πόλεμο, με έμαθε να καταλαβαίνω πόσο σημαντική είναι η ειρήνη. Every Cypriot would be touched by the conflict. It pitted Greek Cypriot against Turkish Cypriot, neighbor against neighbor, village against village. It was a short, bloody war, but its legacy would echo down the decades. When Yusuf Chayla was three years old, his father was traveling in a taxi from Nicosia to his home village, when he disappeared. Çok kötü bir duygu, zor bir duygu. Yani bizim dinimizde şu var. Bir bayram olur, gidersiniz, e, atanızın mezarını ziyaret edersiniz, bir çiçek koyarsınız. Biz bunu hayatımızda hiç yaşayamadık. E, çocuklarımıza işte bu dedenizin mezarı diyemedik. E, bir eksikliktir yani e, içimizde bir uhtedir, bir eksikliktir bu. Annem 22 yaşındaydı. E, şunu isteyebilir yani biz hayatta beraber olamadık öldükten sonra olsun yan yana olalım deyip e, bu tercihi de yapabilir eğer öyle bir tercih olursa ona da saygı duyacak. As the decades passed, the conflict slipped further and further into history, and there's now a greater sense of urgency for the families in their search for the missing. With the passage of time, it gets more and more difficult. 44 and 55 years, respectively, after the events, uh, you know, highways are being built, buildings are being erected, olive trees have become a parking lot or a supermarket. So, very difficult there to work as the time passes, as the witnesses get old and pass away. I have seen so many lives destroyed. To see the pain of the people. I know a friend of mine, her mother used to go to Lebanon before the war to go to fortune tellers to 
Tell her where is her son? Where is her son? I mean, it, it's it's a trauma. I cannot describe to you if somebody, I don't wish on anyone, if somebody becomes missing from your family, I mean, you're finished. You're paralyzed, you can't move, you can't do anything. You're not, you can't act as a normal human being and continue your life. Christina Solomi Patsia was 14 years old when her father and brother were abducted, together with six other villagers in 1974, and vanished. Over the decades that followed, not knowing what happened to them put an enormous strain on Christina and her mother. We tried to stay in one ο νους της πάνω στον παπά μου ή πάνω στον αδερφό μου, στους αγνώμενους. Ε, δεν επιτρέπεται να ανοίξω τηλεόραση, δεν επιτρέπεται να ανοίξω ραδιοφόνο εκτός από τις ειδήσει, γιατί θεωρούσαν ότι ήταν χαρά. Δεν επιτρέπεται να βγω έξω από το σπίτι, να πάω κάπου σε μια φίλη μου, διότι ήταν διασκέδαση. Παίρνοντας ο καιρό, εγώ παντρεύτηκα, έκανα τρία παιδιά. Ποτέ μου όμως δεν είχα μιλήσει για τίποτε. Ε, το θεωρούσα μεγάλη μπλή. It's not Greek pain, it's not Turkish pain, it's human pain. Most of them never spoke to their children about what they suffered because they don't want to hurt their children. So they don't want to hurt anybody else because traumas that are not treated, you pass them involuntarily, even if you don't speak about them, you pass them to the next generation because children feel something is wrong and they carry that uh, scar with them. After 43 years of searching, in late 2017, Christina's father and brother were found, buried in a mass grave. The feeling of going to the place where they were buried was very difficult. Even now, I think of the moment, I feel joy. When I went down and saw them there, it was the way that my father was Μπορούμε να είμαι γυρισμένη την κεφαλή του πίσω και ήταν σαν να με κοίταζε. Άκουσα τη φωνή του να μου λέει ήρθες. Ήρθες. Και όταν κατέβηκα κάτω ήμουν Διακόσα τα εκατό σίγουροι, όταν τους είπα ο αδερφός μου του, το ήταν ακόμα καλυμμένος μέσα σε χώματα, μέσα σε λάσπη. Ε, λέει μου, μα είσαι σίγουρη, έγινε, πώς το κατάλαβες. Λέω, είσαι το, η φανέλα του, αν και ξαπαστεί η φανέλα του, λέω, δεν τούτος. Ε, ρώτησε με για τα δόντια του, είχε δόντι γυρισμένο, το ένα του το δόντι, λέω της ναι, τούτος ήταν. Ήταν σαν να τον έβλεπα μπροστά μου, Hey, το μόνο που έλειπε για μένα ήταν τα μαλλιά. Τα υπόλοιπα ήταν εκεί, ντυμένος, με το παντελόνι του, τον κρίζο, με τη φανέλα του, την καφέ που φορούσε, τα παπούτσια του, εκεί. Ήταν, ε, ε, ε, ήθελα να, να χορεύω, ήθελα να φωνάζω. Να, ε, που τη χαρά μου δεν ήξερα πώς να το, να το εκδηλώσω τη χαρά μου. Very slowly, family by family, digit by digit, we bring down the tension. We help people to find a dignified um, way to bury their loved ones and have a place where they can uh, come and pay respect to their loved ones. That's very important. The living can close the scar and uh, go on with their lives.
One of the main obstacles to reconciliation on the island has been the ongoing illegal occupation of the north. It still bears the stamp of a foreign invader. In 1983, the Turkish Republic of Northern Cyprus declared independence, a nation that no one but Turkey recognizes. It exists in international isolation and today is guarded by 40,000 Turkish troops. Biz aslında olmayan bir ülkede yaşayan olmayan insanlarız. Yokuz yani. Dünyanın unuttuğu, herkesin unuttuğu kapalı bir bölgede korkutucu bir his. Over the decades, the more liberal cosmopolitan Turkish Cypriot has felt threatened by the hundreds of thousands of new settlers arriving from Turkey, fundamentally changing not only the culture but the landscape of northern Cyprus. Buradaki kültürü ister istemez etkiliyor ve değiştiriyor. Çok daha muhafazakarlaşıyor insanlar, çok daha dindarlaşıyor, daha kapalı, daha hoşgörüsüz, daha toleranssız bir toplum haline geliyor. İfade özgürlüğüne toleransımız azalıyor. İnsanların kılık kıyafetine olan toleransımız azalıyor. Olmadığı sürece de bu değişim, bu dönüşüm Kıbrıslı Türklerin muhafazakarlaşması, buradaki kültürün, değişmesi devam edecek ve kötüleşecek. In 2003 in a surprise move, leaders from the north and south opened checkpoints in the green line to allow people to cross freely, raising hopes of a renewed drive to reunite the island. On that historic day, thousands of people who'd been displaced by the war crossed north and south to visit the villages they'd had to flee homes they had lost and hadn't seen for 30 years. Tensions were running high, and there was serious concern that opening the checkpoints would reopen old wounds. When the borders opened, everybody thought, my lord, the Greeks are going to go over to the north to their homes and they're going to find settlers from Turkey there. There's going to be conflict, there's going to, there are going to be problems. Not one drop of blood, not a nose punch, Nothing. People were welcomed on both sides. People went in with tears in their eyes. It was something very emotional to go to your home and find other people living in it on both sides or find it completely destroyed. Huh? In a big tragedy, you have to go to your house όλες αυτές τις αναμνήσεις από την παιδική ηλικία, αυτές τις ωραίες στιγμές που είχαμε περάσει, να θυμάμαι με τον παππού μου, παραδείγματος χάρη, να γυρίζουμε τα περβόλια, τους κάμπους, να μου λέει ιστορίες. Ε, πιστεύω ότι θα βρω το χωριό μου όπως ήταν, όμως ήταν όλα διαφορετικά. Βρήκαμε ανθρώπου οι οποίοι δεν ήταν και ιδιαίτερα ευτυχισμένοι γιατί ζούσαν σε σπίτια που για αυτούς ήταν ξένα. The village of Contea, north of the buffer zone, was Haralambos' home before he had to flee south as a refugee after the war. His village became home to a new community, this time of Turkish Cypriots, refugees like Ali Tayyip. Yetmiş-dört-dört-dört-dört-dört-dört-dört-dört-dört-dört-dört-dört-dört-dört-dört-dört-dört-dört-dört-dört-dört-dört-dört-dört-dört-dört-dört-dört-dört-dört-dört-
By 2003, a whole new generation had come of age knowing nothing but separation. Greek Cypriots and Turkish Cypriots, totally cut off from one another. This was the first time they could venture to the other side of the buffer zone and to start and rekindle old friendships. I was 18 years old. I was crossing with my mom in the car. I mean, I think we both wanted to go just out of curiosity, really, to face certain fears and to face certain uh, painful facts that if you don't face up to these things, I, I don't believe you can really grow as a person or grow as a Cypriot or understand the, the situation in its entirety. Natalie Hami began to campaign for the reunification of the island and together with Ezra Eigen was one of the founding members of the new grassroots movement Unite Cyprus now. They set up their stall here in the buffer zone every weekend to spread their message and break down the barriers to peace. UCN members meet here because we consider this as a heaven for us. It's a place where we feel secure. Greek Cypriot police cannot enter this site and Turkish Cypriot police cannot enter this site. Also, it's a way to bring life back to this place, back to the buffer or dead zone. And for us to try and keep the movement alive and our request to reunite our country. Ah, Delia. Yani insanlar evet belki fiziksel olarak kapılar açıldı ama hala zihinlerde, kafalarda, psikolojilerde bariyerler var. Ben büyürken hiç bir Rum tanımadım, görmedim ki okulda kitaplarda öğretilen şeyler de çok kötü şeylerdi. Rum denilen şeyin bir insan olabileceğini düşünmedim. Böyle zehirleniyor çocuklar Kıbrıs'ta hala bugün dahi. Barış kültüründen bir arada yaşamdan bahsedilmesini istiyoruz. Also trying to bridge that divide is the founder of EasyJet, Sostelios Haji Ioannou. Born to Greek Cypriot parents, he's using his wealth to fund a series of charitable bi-communal projects in Cyprus from his home in Monaco. I think we all have our birthplaces and our countries of origin in our heart. I've spent most of my childhood in, in Athens in Greece, but we used to visit Cyprus to see uh, grandparents. So I have very fond memories of holidays on the island. I was seven years old, born in 67, so by, by 1974 I was just about old enough to remember the news, if you like. I am a pacifist. I believe that, you know, um, the way to have peace in the world is actually to get people to talk to each other. I don't believe you solve problems by war. I don't think you solve problems by uh, erecting walls or dividing people or saying you on that side and you on that side so you don't fight. Um, in reality, you need to allow them to become friends and then they're less likely to fight. And, and that's the essence of my bicommunal project, which is a charity project I started 10 years ago in Cyprus. I believe that people who've been lucky to make a bit of money in life, they have a duty to repay that debt back to society, giving back, if you like, to society. So I'm a great believer in communications and confidence building measures and getting the two you know, communities to talk to each other. When Haralambos returned to his old village of Contea soon after the borders opened, he wanted to restore parts of his old village that had been damaged during the war but he needed the help of the Turkish Cypriots now living there. It was one of the first collaborations between the two sides, but in the beginning, he wasn't sure they'd cooperate with him. In fact, we didn't believe that we would be able to do it. And when we told them what we wanted to do, we said, let's go and we will be together with you. UNDP'nin de yardımlarıyla ben de dedim ki ben de sizinle birlikteyim. Gittiği yere kadar götüreceğiz ve bugünlere gel geldik. Halen daha en birinci dostlarımdan birisidir. Allah iyiliğini versin. Afton eferen don gozmo mazi. Andeliftigan odiodan sinergazumaste morumena bedikume bramada. A peace park with a children's playground and picnic area were built, 
laying the foundations for a lasting friendship. And together they restored the Greek Orthodox Church that Charalambos had prayed in as a child. The Mathema Bubira Menapolina of Tindin Prospathian, it are not the Capcia Paramadaine Guinness Cleronomias, Taminimia in a Guinness Cleronomias, in a Tam Padimaches Tom Brogono, Massine Padimaches Historias. Δηλαδή δεν μπορούμε να τα εξαφανίζουμε επειδή εμείς δεν είμαστε εδώ. The church may only be used on a few special occasions each year when the old residents return to the village. But the fact that it has been restored and preserved is invaluable. Αμάτς και λεζέκ νε σιλερέ μπήρ μοιράς πρακμάκτυρ σόνουστα her iki tarafın insanları da aynı acıları çekiyordur. Ben buna inanıyorum. Gelecek olan nesiller buraları harap gördüğü zaman bize dua değil, bet dua ederler. Onun için ne kadar elimizden geldiğince iyi durumda bırakırsak gelecek nesiller de bir şeyler bulmuş olur. Μάθαμε επίση ότι το χτίσιμο, η αναστήλωση μνημείων είχε να κάνει περισσότερο με την αναστήλωση των σχέσεων μα. Δηλαδή, όπω χτίζαμε τι πέτρε, σιγά σιγά ξαναχτίζονταν και οι σχέσει μα και κερδίζαμε την εμπιστοσύνη ένα του άλλου. Trust is like a glass of crystal. When it breaks, it breaks in a thousand pieces. Then you have to restore it. You can restore it, you can stick it back together. It takes time, and that's the precondition for reconciliation. No restoration of trust, no reconciliation. Sir Stelios is taking that reconciliation to another level. Having made his millions investing in enterprises around the world, through his charitable foundation, he's now investing in the people of Cyprus themselves. 2008 was the first actual award ceremony, if you like, where we gave the first prizes to Greek Cypriots and Turkish Cypriots simply for cooperating. And it's been going up and up and up. And 2017 was probably the high watermark for, for cooperation between the two communities. All forms of bi-communal cooperation on the island is eligible for a prize of 10,000 euros in business, sciences, arts and sport. But he's also supporting one of the last remaining taboos, marriages between Turkish Cypriots and Greek Cypriots. The ultimate form of cooperation is when two people get together and, you know, they have bicommunal babies now. That was... It didn't exist. Can you imagine? 650,000 people on the one side, 350,000 people on the other side, and they were not allowed to marry <laughs> for 35 years. So all of a sudden, I think, you know, the, the climate is changing. Hello. The community of mixed couples on the island is very small and they offer one another invaluable support as they come face to face with the realities of the past. We knew there were problems that we had to face. We just didn't pay too much attention at the beginning because we just want to feel our love like every young couple where you, when you first meet, you're gonna let the fire go, you take you wherever it goes. But then things got a bit serious. We started having questions. Our parents started finding out about our relationship. And then we start having the first opposition from within our families. They were worrying about not us, basically, but our future, our kids' future. That's why they said to me that, um, I mean, you have to think twice. <laughs> but they were determined. They married, had two children, and were the first couple to receive Stelius's award for a bicommunal relationship. But they are aware that their sons may face problems in the future. When the time comes, they will receive an invitation from the National Guard of the Republic of Cyprus and from the army in the Turkish Cypriot community. Um, and um, we are even now don't know the answers how we're going to deal with the issue when it comes. How are they going to go to the one side and teach them that the Turkish Cypriots are our enemy? And then the same person has to attend the Turkish Cypriot military service to learn exactly the opposite things, you know. Uh, Greeks are our enemies, we have to, you know, vanish them. Families like theirs are extremely rare, and they're very conscious that some on the island are hostile to their relationship.
So we decided, because we don't know the future of the Cyprus problem, we decided, at least for, uh, when it comes to our children, to hide their faces as much as we can in order, in order to protect them, basically in Cyprus. No, I'm not worrying about outside Cyprus, I'm worrying about Cypriots. Um, that's, that's very sad <laughs> to say, but we feel that we are moving backwards. I don't, we don't think peace is coming. It's not on our, in our hands, it doesn't matter how we try. And we don't want to let the Cyprus problem hurt our kids in the future. We forget how much courage it takes to be together, to fight for our right to choose, to live and to love. Maybe this, I think this at some point won't be enough anyway. No. I mean, emo emotional support among friends is not enough at the end of the day because there are generations to come. For Michalis and Shukran's sons, their battles lie in the future while others like artist Neil Gungune are still haunted by the past. Halbuki seyahat etmeyi seven bir insanım ama bombardımandan dolayı çok uzun yıllar uçak sesi beni hep korkuttu. Bunun gibi Ee, pek çok korkular geliştirdim. Ee, hayatımı engelley engelleyecek korkular geliştiriyordum. Her gün yeni bir korku. Resim öyle bir şey ki e, e, bir takım deşarj da yaşıyorsunuz. Resimde kendinizi insanı hep ikiye bölüyordum. Ama ben bunun farkında değildim bana. Bunun psikiyatristim. Benim kendi kimlik bölünmelerimle ilgili, Kıbrıs'ın bölünmesiyle ilgili, Kıbrıslı Rum ve Kıbrıslı Türk mü olduğunla ilgili bir takım e, Kıbrı resimlerimin çoğunda, yüzde seksen veya doksanında Kıbrıs, e, Lefkoşa ve yaşanan travmalar ortaya e, çalıştım. Hayır, hiçbir zaman unutacağımı sanmıyorum. Yani bu unutulacak bir şey değildir. Yani bir savaş yaşamışsanız e, gerçekten bu ölene kadar unutabileceğiniz bir şey olamaz. E, bilinmeyen bir yere götürülen kişileri temsil ediyor. Henüz daha bulunmayan insanlar vardır. Henüz daha her, hepsi bulunamamıştır. Ama onlar belki bize bir yerden bakıyorlar. Ee, bizi bulun diye bize e, çağrı yapıyorlar. I am working for CMP since 2009. And when I start this job, always in my mind, the first thing to find my grandfather, to at least to help CMP to find him. Oh. Lally, look at this. Mm -hmm. It's a nice piece. It's too big though. Yeah. So it seems like animal. Yeah. My grandfather got lost in 1974. He was fighting to protect the primary school of Poly Village. And he got killed when he was fighting. I was in stress, of course, because I promised my f whole family to find my grandfather. And thank God we found him in 2015. The first time I saw my grandfather, and I was sad, of course. I saw him dead, was lying on the soil. So it's a different feeling, really. At the same time, you were happy and you were sad. Αρκετά άτομα τα οποία δουλεύουμε εδώ, στην Επιτροπή, έχουμε και ήδη αγνοούμενα πρόσωπα. Πράγματι, είναι αρκετά δύσκολη η δουλειά καθημερινά να ασχολείσαι, να βλέπεις, να ασχολείσαι με τα οστά. Παρ' όλα αυτά, όμως, είναι και όλη η ουσία της δουλειάς μας. Δουλεύουμε για τις οικογένειες, άρα παρόλο το ότι είναι δύσκολο συναισθηματικά. Θα πει και... 
iki toplumun kayıplar komitelerinin e, yaptığı iş bana göre kutsal bir iştir. Çok önemli bir görev yapıyorlar ve bunu sonuna kadar sürdürmeleri lazım. E, zaman zaman yaptıkları toplantılara, çalışmalara ben de gidiyorum. E, biz de katkı koymaya çalışıyoruz. When I arrived here, I was um, struck by to see my colleagues, uh, young Cypriots of both communities. They are the living proof that it is possible for the two communities to, to live together. And I was also very moved by the fact that they basically exhumed the sins of their fathers in order to fix the situations for their own children, for the future. Huh? This is the meaning of this work. It's uh, not only for the dead, it's, it's mainly for the living that we do that. So I can understand all the families that they are waiting for their missings because I was waiting also. And my family, my grandmother, she was waiting over 40 years to see her husband. So I can understand all the families, how they are feeling. And I hope one day we'll find all the missings. Time is running out for the families of the missing, and for the Cypriots on the island, reconciliation seems even further away than ever. The clock is ticking. Şimdi 40 yıllık bir ayrılık söz konusu. Artık birbirimizin dilini konuşmuyoruz. E, birbirimizin geleneklerini unuttuk. E, birbirimizi anlamaya, empati kurmaya çalışmıyoruz. Bunu unuttuk. Kısa zaman içerisinde çözüm olmazsa, önümüzdeki birkaç yıl içerisinde çözüm olmazsa artık çözüm şartları olmayacak bu ülkede. It's already getting too late. It has to happen now. This year. It's 5 to 12. Time is 5 to 12. Unless we do it now, it'll be too late, unfortunately. And every time we lose an opportunity, things get worse and worse and worse. So if we really want a reunification of our country, and I certainly do, then we have to act now. Πιστεύω ότι όσοι δεν το καταλαβαίνουν αυτό και δεν θα καταλάβουν πόσο καλύτερα θα ήταν αν η χώρα ήταν μία. Νιώθουμε ότι έχουμε κάνει κάτι πολύ σημαντικό και ότι μπορούμε να δούμε τα παιδιά μας, τα εγγόνια μας στα μάτια και να, όταν μας ρωτήσουν γιατί δεν κάναμε κάτι, εμείς θα πούμε ότι εμείς τουλάχιστον προσπαθήσαμε. <Τι>